Hello and welcome to this presentation by INE of what is Ethernet and why should I care? So in this thing I'm going to give you everything you ever wanted to know but were afraid to ask about Ethernet. So let's start with some of the course objectives just to give you an idea of what this course was designed for. So first of all, this course doesn't wasn't really designed to fall in a particular bucket of a Cisco certification. It's not just for Cisco CCNA or CCNP or CCIE. This is about Ethernet. This is for people, whatever level you are at currently in your studies, or maybe you're not studying for a certification at all, you just want to learn more about Ethernet. That's what this is for. Now, certainly the stuff I'm going to teach you here is relevant at, at all levels of Cisco certifications, but it wasn't designed to fall into one of those categories of certifications. So I'm, I devised this to provide you an understanding of the developmental history of Ethernet. I don't know about you, but if you're like me, knowing how something started, how it was created in the first place, what problem it was designed to solve, and then seeing how it evolved over time really helps me to better grasp how the protocol is today and how it got that way. And we're going to talk about that. Give you some clear examples of the different Ethernet frame formats, sizes, and options. So we're going to go into what all the different fields are within an Ethernet frame. So that if you ever do a Wireshark sniffer capture or something like that, you know what you're looking at. Going to go into the details of Carrier Sense Multiple Access Collision Detect as it pertains to Ethernet. Certainly, if you're studying for any Cisco certification, this is one of those things they definitely expect you to know, CSMACD and how it works. So we're going to get into all the gory details of that. And we're going to recognize some high-level differences in Ethernet cables, talk a little bit about cable structure, you know, what's the difference between shielded twisted pair versus unshielded twisted pair, uh, you know, what's the difference between 10 base T versus 100 base TX and that kind of stuff and other things in here as well. So there's going to be other topics above and beyond just what we have here as our course objectives. So what's my agenda? So I'm breaking this up into a series of videos. So hopefully each video will be fairly short in duration. The first section will be Ethernet overview and history. Following that, we'll spend a detailed time on CSMA CD. Talk a little bit about auto negotiation, which is something that happens in the background. Not really something you can influence, but if you're like me, Sometimes you wonder, how is this working? I might not be able to influence it, but what exactly is it doing to do this? And auto negotiation is one of those topics. We'll look at the Ethernet frame structure. We'll talk about Ethernet frame sizes and things like, for example, called runts and giants and jumbo frames. And then we'll finish up with Ethernet cabling types. So, prerequisite knowledge. Yes, I, I am assuming that if you're watching this, there is some really sort of low-level knowledge that you already have under your belt to make use of this. For example, in one of my slides, I show the OSI model, and I'm going to talk about where Ethernet fits into the OSI model. Well, if you don't know what the OSI model is, that will be completely irrelevant to you, meaningless to you. So I'm hoping you know what the OSI model is. Uh, the, the concepts of encapsulating and decapsulating data. In other words, when I just said that, encapsulating and decapsulating data, were you thinking, huh, what, what's that? If so, probably want to pause this and go to that topic within a CCNA curriculum. I'm going to be using terms such as bandwidth and bits and bytes. Once again, I'm hoping that you understand what I just said and it didn't just fly over your head. And also understanding at a real high level sort of conceptually how binary bits, how ones and zeros can be used to represent data. Right now, there's lots of different ways that we can use binary to encode data, but just sort of a general idea that binary is just a code, right? Whether I'm looking at an image, or whether I'm looking at text, or whether I'm listening to an audio file, electrically, that's all converted into electrical signals of ones and zeros. And my system and the other receiving system knows how to convert that back into an image or an audio file or some sort of text. So I'm hoping you're familiar with that. So this actually is taking place as a live course right now. So if you're watching the recording, every once in a while you'll see me go back to the live learners just to see if they have any questions and answer any questions that they might have. Now, if you're watching this as a recording and you did not have a chance to watch the live version, 
by all means, you can feel free to submit your questions at any time. And you can see here, here's my email address, kbogart at ine.com. Also, if you want, you can follow me on Twitter, and that's where I post tweets about things like upcoming courses I'm going to have, um, upcoming live boot camps I'm going to have. We're going to have a CCNA boot camp here in the INE office just next week. Um, and also, you can follow me on LinkedIn, where I also post things, post some documents, or just give status updates about what's going on around here.